This is geometry lesson 7.3, using triangle congruence. So the big idea says one way to prove the congruence of sides or angles is to show that they are corresponding sides of congruent triangles. So we've used uh, the CPCF, corresponding parts of congruent figures theorem before, saying if you know that uh, two figures, and in this case it'll be very specific, two triangles are congruent, then we know all of their angles and all their sides are the same. So if we want to prove one of their sides are the same and it's not given, we can first prove that the triangles are congruent. And then obviously we know all the sides and angles are congruent because of that. And so we can use that information to help us prove either angles or sides are congruent. So here we go. First one is kind of a review from 7.2, but we're going to build a proof from scratch. We're just trying to prove that these two triangles are congruent. There's actually two different ways we can do that here in this picture. So we'll talk about both ways. So first of all, we always know our first step is to basically just restate what's given to us. But let's always analyze what's been given and why it's been given. So they're telling you that these are parallel. So write these symbols mean parallel. So that's important. Anytime you see parallel, you need to be thinking alternate interior, corresponding, stuff like that. So we're going to be able to prove that these angles are equal to each other by alternate interior. That's why that's given there. And then also AX bisects BY. So AX is cutting BY in half. Notice AX isn't being bisected. AX is bisecting BY. So this line BY is getting cut in half. That means P is the midpoint. Okay, so let's plan ahead here. Uh, if that's being bisected, I know that these two pieces are equal to each other. It's being cut in half. Some other things I know, alternate interior angles like this one and this one are going to be equal. The others would as well. So if I did that, I have angle, angle, side for both of these. But I also want to point out the fact that there are vertical angles here as well. So I know that those two are equal. And now I have angle, side, angle. So like I said, there's two different ways that you could prove that these triangles are congruent, either using both sets of alternate interiors, and then it's angle, angle, side, or using just one of these pairs. Um, you would probably want to use this one. If you use the other one, it would still be angle, angle, side. So really, there's three different ways that you could solve this. So lots of different options here. Let's go ahead and use the verticals. So I'm going to call this angle A, P, B. I know it's congruent to this other one, angle X, P, Y, just because they're vertical angles. And since I marked these, we'll go with these. I know that angle B is congruent to angle Y. And so here's your parallel lines being cut. These would be alternate interior angles. And if you go ahead and you walk through what we've got so far, we've got the angle, we've got the angle. We marked these sides, but we haven't stated it in our proof. So we still need to state that this piece equals this piece. So BP right here is congruent to this piece right here, P. Why? How did we know that? Because we saw this word bisects. That's what told us we could say that. And so that's the definition of bisects. All right. And so now we have our three pieces of information that we need to prove triangle congruence. So we now have enough information to say that this triangle and just copy it exactly like they have here in the proof. So this triangle, APB, up top is congruent to XYP on the bottom. And you have to go based on what we used. We used these sides, we used the vertical angles, and we used B and Y. So just look inside one of the triangles to see your setup. It's angle, side, angle. Now again, you could have said that X is equal to A because those are alternate interior. 
and you could have used the vertical and it would have been angle, angle, side. Or you could have used the other alternates and not used the vertical at all. You could have used B equals Y, A equals X, and these sides are equal and gone angle, angle, side that way. Remember, you cannot do angle, angle, angle. So we do need this side one way or the other, either through ASA or AAS. Okay, so lots of different ways you could go about that one. All right, now the main part of this chapter in 7.3 is to take it one step further, literally just one more line in your proof. So we're not proving that the triangles are congruent. That's not our final proof. We're trying to prove that this side, KE, equals this side, TE. And we have to go through a whole proof to do that. We don't have enough information currently to say that. But if I can prove that this triangle is the same as this triangle, then corresponding parts are going to be equal to each other. So I can use that fact to prove that these are equal. So let's mark what's given first. KI is congruent to IT. And then IE, this line, bisects angle KIT. So it's cutting this angle into two equal pieces. So I know those two angles are equal. And then, of course, I need one more piece of information. Well, this big triangle and this big triangle both share this side, IE. And so that's going to be my third piece. So this is going to be a side angle side proof. All right, and then once I've proven that these two triangles are congruent, I can say these angles are equal, these angles are equal, these sides are equal, any of that. Because if I know the triangles are congruent, then I know every corresponding part of a congruent figure is congruent. All right, so here we go. We're going to go through the proof just like we did up here, and then there's one more step to just say this. We'll use the CPCF on that last line. So step one. State all of the given. You need it. Okay. We already have sides. All right. So we don't have to add an extra line for those. That was given to us. Uh, we do need to state that those angles are equal. We haven't said that yet. So that's angle... K, I, E, congruent to angle T, I, E. When you name those, the vertex is all that's important. The other directions, you could have these flip-flopped. And we're also going to prove this part, right, using the reflexive. If you did that on line two and you put the angles on line three, that's fine. There's no specific order. You get to build this kind of just as you want. You just have to have all the information in there. But the order that you state it, um, is not important. The only thing that's important is you have to take the information um, one step at a time if it's building on itself. So I have to actually state the fact that something's being bisected before I can use the definition of uh, bisector. I couldn't put that later. Okay, It's got to be in chronological order in terms of your reasoning and your thinking. But stating if these angles are equal or these sides are equal, it doesn't matter which you put first. Okay, the reason I knew that these angles were equal was because this said bisects. That's the only reason I know that. So that's the definition of bisects. All right, so I'm going to mark that. I've got angles now. And now in three, I can say that IE, that side of this triangle is equal to the same side there. So it's equal to itself. It's part of both triangles and anything being equal to itself we've discussed is the reflexive property okay so that is now another side and when you're building these don't necessarily go back here and say oh it's SAS because you could have put this in any order in your proof what matters is where it's at in the picture so just looking at one triangle it is SAS as you work your way around. So I'm going to state that these triangles are congruent to each other. So K, I, E. Now when you state a congruent triangle, you do have to put the corresponding parts in the same order. So K matches T, so it's going to be tri triangle T. We know I matches I, and then E matches E. So K, I, E is congruent to T, I, E. 
The reason we know that is SAS. And so to take it one step further, now that I know these triangles are congruent, that means all of their corresponding parts are also congruent. So now I can safely say KE is congruent to TE because corresponding parts of congruent figures are congruent. That's the CPCF theorem, and you don't even have to write theorem because technically this SAS has theorem here as well. You can just write SAS and you can just write CPCF. All right, one more on the back. So we're given a circle. Anytime you have a circle and you've got these triangles inside of it, you pretty much know you're going to be using the radius of these circles to prove that some of these segments are equal to each other because the radius of a circle is equal in every direction. So again, when you're given something, you always have to think about why am I being given this? How can I use it? So first let's write this. Um, I'm just going to say you have circle O. And then we also have BA is congruent to DC. So instead of writing out this whole thing, um, you can just label it circle O. That's the circle symbol. You have to show that there's a center circled. If the center was A, you would call it circle A, whatever it is. Okay, that's circle O. BA is going to equal DC. That is your given. Let's label that in the picture. So BA equals DC. Uh, let's see now. So we don't really know anything about these angles. Nothing is split up. You look, you've got two circles, and both of them have their own different radius. So this line, OD, I'm going to mark it 2. That's going to be equal to this one because both of those go from the center all the way to the outside of the big circle. So that's going to be equal to BO. So let's go ahead and write that in there. BO congruent to DO. And I know that because that's the definition of a circle. Every point on the circle is the same distance away from the center. That's called your radius. Um, so this is your definition of a circle. That's how I knew those were equal, because I know the definition of a circle. All right, and then we also want to use these little pieces. So this starts to look a little confusing. So we've got this triangle right here. If you have a highlighter, you probably want to highlight that one. So I'm going to kind of highlight it here in red a little bit. And we've got this triangle out here in blue. And now I haven't actually talked about our end game here. Our end game is to prove that these angles are equal to each other. So AOB, this angle in here, we have to prove that it's equal to COD, this one in here. And so if I can prove that these triangles are congruent to each other, I can say all of these angles match up. Okay, so first I'm, I'm in the process of trying to prove that these two triangles are equal. Since I don't know anything about any of these angles, I'm shooting for SSS here. I was given these ones, BA and DC being equal. I've got a radius equal to another radius. And then in the small circle, I've got another two radius. Now, this one looks funny because it looks like, well, that doesn't help us. It's half of a side, but it's the whole side of this blue triangle, right? And that's going to match this one. Okay, so I'm going to mark this with three and three right there. It's definitely a complicated picture, and that's why I put this one on here so we can see it. So now I'm going to use AO congruent to CO. Again, both the radius of a circle, a different circle, smaller circle, but still the reason I knew that they were congruent is because they are the radius of a circle, so that's the definition of a circle. I now have a side that was given to me, and then two sides that I proved using the circle. So now I can state that these triangles are congruent to each other. So triangle OAB 
congruent to. Now, keep harping on this. You have to you have to match these up so that these angles are in the right corresponding part. And sometimes in the picture, it's hard to tell what goes with what. So well, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to start. There's kind of a clue here. They're telling you that you're trying to prove that these two angles at O are equal. So since that's what you're trying to prove, it's safe to assume that those are going to be equal. So when I name these, I'm going to start them both with O. So O, A, B. And then I went from O to A. I went across the side that I marked with three symbols. So as I go here, you can kind of see it too. This is the longer side matches this longer side. This is the shorter side that matches the shorter side. But my markings tell me that these two are equal to each other. I can go from O across that to A. So I'm going from O across that to C. So O, C, D. I knew that by SSS. And now that I've proven that these two triangles are congruent, I can say this angle equals this one, and this one equals this one. And specifically, the only one that matters for this problem is the one they wanted me to prove. So angle AOB is congruent to angle COD because of CPCF. Corresponding parts of congruent figures are congruent. So a lot more practice on building proofs here today for these triangles. The only thing that's brand new now is this extra line. So if we're not just trying to prove that a triangle is congruent, that specific angles or sides of a triangle are congruent, you still go through the whole process, prove that the triangle is congruent by SSS or SAS or whatever. And then once you know the two triangles are congruent to each other, you can state that any of their corresponding pieces are congruent as well using CPCF.